Welcome to Softcore History. Hello and welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host, Rob Fox, and I am joined, as always, by... I'll start with Jake. Hey, what's up, man? Not much. Good to see you. I like your reptile print uh, shirt. Yes, it is a, it is a Florida Gator shirt. Yeah. Um, it's an old school Steve Spurrier throwback. Oh. So I, I got it for game day. I would have preferred the uh, actual reptile print from your uniforms like two or three years the ago. The A&M game in 2017. Was that what it was? Yeah. No, those were god awful. Joe owned one of those, actually. Uh, he got one of those right when they came out. Why wouldn't you? They're the worst uniforms they're the I've fucking, ever. <laughs> they're so bad that they'll one day be like a dope throwback to it like people will be like it'll be like oh. so gross that people want it if we would have won that game if we would have won that game against texas a&m people would have been clamoring for us to wear it every every fucking game oh did you lose we lost in it uh, yeah we lost in the uniform i just remember the uniform yeah um but yeah no i am wearing this polo i'm also wearing it because i am a supporter of the draco reptilian overlords and i'm trying to signal to them yeah we were talking about reptile overlords uh before they all live under the denver airport or something like that oh well, yeah of, of one of many places yeah. i mean obviously you have the lost continent of lemuria mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. uh africa and the indian subcontinent yes uh draco reptilians ran that I, for anyone that needs to know more about Draco Reptilians, check out the documentary Above Majestic. <laughs> I tried to make Dan watch it. Dan across from me. I want to join by Dan Register. We won't keep him out of this conversation yeah. anymore. I tried to make Dan watch oh, it's, it. It's my turn yeah. to Hi. actually talk. Hi. Okay, cool. Uh, what's up, guys? Um, Jake tried to turn that on when we were at his house. Sounds about right. Uh, well, you were fucked up, and Jake wanted to. Put no, he, on something he weird. was fucked up. I uh, took a few edibles, drank. I was just yeah. casually drinking. I was okay. not going too hard because I went camping the night before where I went really hard. And uh, yeah, the first five minutes we had uh, space submarines with Nazi flags that mm-hmm. were American colors. And at that point, uh, me and his wife, Katie, were like, I think it's time to go to the bar. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I love that you guys were like, now it's time to take Jake to, to a public. place to drink yeah. more. To the <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. He's all lubed up with Nazi submarine, <laughs> Nazi American submarines. He's on that lizard alien people yeah, talk again. Get him Let's talking get him. to fucking people. <laughs> Let's get him in front of some bartenders <laughs> and see how long it takes him to cut him off. Which if they the, don't. It was it, quite the like juxtaposition because we went from the finale of Dave to that. Is it a juxtaposition? I feel like... There's a pretty big overlap between people who would be into Dave. Who are fans of Little Dicky and then also believe in reptilians. Not believe in, but are interested by. Like, don't you think that's something? It's surprising that Little Dicky's like, oh, shit, I'll smoke some weed and watch that. Maybe not Little Dicky, but maybe Brain. Brain would definitely. Yeah. What does brain do? <laughs> brain and all these people. I can't do that voice, man. But She don't know shit about Pangea. That's all I know. Pangea? <laughs> you thought that was real, bro? That's propaganda. Mm-hmm. The lizards want we you to believe in We are a history co- podcast, Jake. Get your bullshit out of here. I'm sorry, but it's not my fault the lizards want their propaganda machine to make you think that continental drift is real. That's bullshit. Why Come would, on. I don't know what the... What, what's the, like... What's the qui bono on... Making, convincing you that since continental you use drift that, is real? It's just to rub it in your face. <laughs> yeah, use <laughs> just that, to make you sound like an idiot. Use that like, term, like, four episodes ago, so now I know what it means. Continental drift or Pangea? No, qui bono. Qui bono. We hear that all the time in this fucking. What is qui bono? Second mean? time I've heard it in Wait, my life. Really? I don't actually. I mean, I know what pro bono means. It's for free. What is qui bono? Rob literally used it four episodes ago and explained it to me. So now I know. Uh, who benefits? Yeah. It's like oh. an old Roman phrase. It's like so when you want to. So it was. I man, how have you read like nine eleven conspiracies and never heard qui bono? Because the whole thing is they're like, dude, the bus was really do it. Qui bono? I don't know. Who benefited? How, how have you done uh, 52 podcasts now of this exact podcast and not learned how to speak into a microphone? Ooh. Fair. We actually talked. Uh, one of the few things I do remember from Saturday. We just trashed it, you. We, we just roasted your the mic talking time. into everything. Fuck. Yeah. Sounds no. fine to me. Yeah. No, that's fair. We knew you'd say that. Oh, it sounds fine to you with no headphones on? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to not listen to this podcast well, either. I, I didn't have much else to say. I'm pretty sure the rest of the time I was with Dan, I was just like, I think I'm pretty drunk. <laughs> Which, by the way, episode 52. We yeah, made it's it our year 52 long. straight weeks. This is a year. We haven't missed a single episode. I guess, is it technically next week is our one year? Uh, well, I don't know. Whatever this completes the, first, the one year. This, this completes is, the yeah, one this year. Is the yeah, cycle. Yeah, yeah. So you have to go, I guess, a, a week further to, for it to so be give, a, give ourselves a pat on the back. And does this count? I mean, if someone walks in and murders us, we haven't finished the episode. Uh, it'll find its way out. 
Yeah. Yeah. If it's murdered, it'll probably be our best episode. And you know what? People are going to think it's because I was talking about those fucking reptilians and they had to silence me. Yeah. It'll be like yeah. when McAfee threw out the uh, Instagram post of just the letter Q mm-hmm. before he killed himself. Uh, didn't he have a tattoo on his arm that said, like, I didn't kill myself or something like that? Who could say? Yeah. I, I mean, maybe, uh, actually, a little plug for Iconoblast, maybe Cooper could say, because that's what they covered on two episodes of Iconoblast. He had schwacked tattooed on his arm. There we uh, go. Originally, it was whacked, and then he added a S dollar sign in front of it. Sick. <laughs> on brand. Yeah, very Pat. Not Pat McAfee. <laughs> Yeah, not John McAfee. John, yeah. yeah, Pat McAfee getting killed in a fucking uh, killing himself in a prison. Well, with Pat, a, Pat McAfee or Pat McAfee? Pat McAfee. Okay, I mean, yeah, the what? sports guy. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, a punter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. turned uh, radio host, turned, turned disruptor. It's on brand. It would be on brand for him to have schwacked tattooed on his arm. It wouldn't be on brand for him to uh, kill himself in Good prison. Day. Catalonian prison or yeah. whatever it was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know pat mcafee's from west virginia so i feel like it might be on brand that's fair i think he's from west he went to west virginia he went to yeah but is he from there is anyone yeah, from like west it. virginia except randy moss just randy yeah. and bobby he doesn't bowden. sound like randy randy, moss, randy has the redneck voice randy moss bobby bowden yeah randy RIP, doesn't even care Nick about Saban. football he wanted to fish the entire he just time. wants yeah. to fish he played fo- football was a means to an end of upgrading his fishing lifestyle really I mean, I don't know, dude. I don't know if he was ever upgrading. <laughs> I think he just liked that one spot behind his house. Yeah, in the that's stick fair, actually. He's yeah. just in the, in the crick. Yeah. You just catch him what's there. Yeah. Some crawdads and whatever other little shitty fish are in the crick. Like, he, doesn't yeah. want to, he doesn't want to go deep sea fishing. No. Like, he's not catching marlin and whatever the fuck else. It's a waste of time. So yeah. that's why he's better than Jerry Rice, is because Jerry Rice spends his entire post career talking about how good he was. Randy Moss doesn't have to do that. No. no. No one ever says, like, oh, man, he just got riced. No. He got so mossed. He got mossed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, Randy's not on, like, a propaganda tour to tell everybody how good he was. You just watch the highlights. That's a very 90s athlete thing because they're pre-YouTube so that people can't. I mean, even though their highlights are on YouTube now, people weren't, like, going back and, like, jacking off to their highlights because they couldn't. Whereas, like, you were getting, like, you, could re- you, couldn't, you couldn't rewatch uh rice's highlights over and over and over and over and over immediately you had to like wait for that sports center to go all the way back through that nfl network yeah documentary yeah yeah Whereas NFL moss, films like when by the time moss was on the patriots you know you could watch that on youtube and whatever the fuck else yeah twitter wasn't around yet but the other stuff for sure yeah and then anyone after that but also really just fuck jerry rice that's fine stick him ass using bitch <laughs> he's honestly maybe the most unathletic like not unathletic, but uh, un uh, imposing like goat of all time. Yeah, he's like not like a remarkable physical specimen. Right. Super yeah. fundamental. Yeah, I he's, run crispy routes. He's a yeah. possession wide receiver that runs clean routes. Yeah. Like yeah, he's not like an in space guy. No, no. You yeah. know what? You want know route Randy ran every time. Fate fly, <laughs> fly yeah. go route. <laughs> like, go yeah, Just go. Hey, do the thing where you stop and for a second and, you and know, keep going. And you know, like who knew it was coming? The defense, and you know who couldn't stop it? The defense. Yeah, it's it says one thing when you can send a guy just straight up on either a post or a fly route every time, and he's going to catch it. Well, speaking of inevitability, oh, let's Segway. get into our let's get into our topic. Something that was inevitable as inevitable as Randy Moss running a fly route. I'm excited that we're actually that you're hosting because that like at any moment your child could pop out. Yeah, and I and, would uh, just have to leave. Yeah, you'd have to leave. I had nothing prepared. I actually didn't prepare a backup we're, either. We're, me and yeah. well, you're going to need it. to, I guess, in two weeks for yeah. sure. We're well, like, we're always going to have to have a backup topic if it's Rob's week because who knows? Yeah. You might get a call right now. I mean, if we're like 30 minutes in, I'll probably just finish the episode. Yeah, you got to finish the episode before you see your child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I, I'll why, have, my child probably wouldn't respect me. I will have more beef with your child. Yeah, I'll have more beef than you already have. Yeah. Which is a lot, apparently. Mm hmm. That's fine. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I've never met anyone that hate something that doesn't exist yet, like Dan. Doesn't exist kid. yet? Because I know plenty of people that hate, hate stuff that, that doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Doesn't exist yeah. yet. Something that has yet to happen, yeah, like okay. to materialize. Okay. It's like, I'd say like the hate that Dan has for your kid is like people when they saw the Cybertruck from Tesla. Yeah. It's like, they don't even know. They just learned about it. It's not here. It's not even here it yet. It doesn't work. Like, it's yeah. not, you don't, not, there's no way to judge it aside from. It's not interacting with society yeah. in any way, shape, or form, yeah. but you know. You just know. And if and you your don't heart know, you're not going to like now it. Now you know. Rap lyric. Finish it. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, our topic today is the New York City elevator operator strike of 1945. Sounds captivating. And I think you might be able to guess by both the type of worker that was striking and how we use elevators today, how that strike turned out. Uh, worker's paradise. Karl Marx had it right. <laughs> and everyone that is, uh, everyone that was a elevator operator is now a fat cat holding big bags with dollar signs. Yeah. All 13 of them. That's why the number 13 is <laughs> off elevators forever now. Yeah, that's a, it's actually a symbol. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not anything with luck. It was solely based off this strike. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm guessing. Episode over. Good job, guys. Yeah, we're yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Clap again to clap out. Let's go. <laughs> we're good. No, uh, yeah, this strike, this strike basically invented the automatic elevator. So every time you see, like, those fucking memes that your like uncle or whatever posts about like McDonald's workers wanting fifteen dollars an hour, and then you see like the automatic menus, and you're like, okay, Uncle Uncle Steve, whatever. Like, no, that's real, and that happened with elevator operators. I feel like anyone that doubts that that's a real thing that's going to happen is kind of fucking stupid. Yeah. Well, the thing is that well, a lot of people probably don't know this is that like they don't like they understand that things become automated, for example, but they don't necessarily. I didn't know about this until I found until I saw it for the first time, like very recently. That there's actually a very quick automation uh, replacement scenario in our past. Yeah, isn't that the whole argument for UBI, Universal Basic Income? Is yeah, literally, like everyone's job is going to be replaced. Eventually. Getting it completely automated out. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. especially podcast hosts. Look, I, I'm actually all for UBI. Oh, you know, actually, everyone will just become a podcast host. Yeah, we're all just talking about things we like. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm all for. No, it. eventually the robots will figure out the An algorithm, algorithm, and it'll be better than anything we've produced. Five yeah. minutes yeah. banter. Yeah, 100. <laughs> percent I agree. I completely agree with that. Throw and in AI will eventually write quip. better comedy than yeah probably beings. you you uh you subs you don't subscribe to the joke bot nine thousand the only problem will be if it advances too quickly and then we don't get the jokes because we're too dumb but Ooh. all the AIs are laughing I mean yeah, yeah. All <laughs> the other AI thinks it's no dude hilarious. it's just the AI becomes a comedian that's writing for other comedians yeah and it just it's like full circle <laughs> it's just been bad advancing comedy. okay like before Siri there was smarter child on aim yeah and you could ask smarter you could talk to smarter child that be like hey smarter child ask or tell me a, a joke and you come up with something quick yeah and i mean it that was never it would never 15 have 15 years ago me, well thankfully really? yeah well not it, thankfully i wanted to see what it could come up with yeah no, it means no rob even with a robot yeah i had to like ask it asl mm -hmm. <laughs> american sign language yeah. article <laughs> boom asl yeah. You know what that means, right? H sex location. Yeah. yeah. Also around that time, do you remember the guy that uh pretended to be like from the future that like predict said he predicted nine eleven and all that was it John Tudor or something? Does oh. that ring a bell? Man, there's on, like, been a bunch so, of message there, forms. There's been so many of those guys. There's there's a guy there's a guy right now that's pretending to be a person from the year like uh twenty seven fifty four on Sick. TikTok. We made it that far? Yeah. Well, no. But he time travels back to make sure we do. Um, he's predicting a giant uh, hurricane hitting South Carolina. Category six. They have to make a new category for it. I like that. Uh, when uh, this September, I think like September fourteenth. Perfect. Because I'm supposed to go to I'm supposed to go to Charleston. Like, <sighs> Wake like me up when soon. September ends. Like Jake. right after that. So pun cleric. <laughs> See, it's really easy to write. Yeah, we're fucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're done. Um, Reference. But yeah, this strike invented the automatic elevator. So, that's right. We're here to dunk on unions. Oh. Just which, speaking of which, I like unions. modern I elevators, too. have you ever, they're supposed to get kind of like routinely checked every year, and they give them a letter grade. And I remember um, at UCF, I think every elevator was graded a D, and they were still operating. Yeah. It's fine. Kids don't need nice elevators. It's just above a failure. Yeah. It's not. Did it fail? <laughs> Did you die in an elevator no. at UCF? I got stuck in, uh, yeah, I got stuck at least twice I really? actually, at UCF. Jesus in an Christ, that's I, terrible. I actually had like a sketch, a really rough sketch idea at one point or something where it was just like the free market, like people, free market people like fully get their way to the point where like you don't have to inspect anything. There's no, no regulations on anything. Oh, so, yeah. there, so there's like certain buildings. That just have elevators where the cables snap all the time. And it's like, well, I mean, no, people don't, people won't go in there to do business, but like people are 
but it's so cheap to do business there that, <laughs> they that just keep people going keep going and like dying like, in elevator accidents. Like multi-story Walmart. Yeah, just yeah, like, and yeah. then when they die, it's just like they knew the risk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's like the I, the total free market people where it's like, well, if they put glass in Pez, no one will eat Pez anymore. It's like, but then you have to find out because people keep eating glass. Right. It's like, no. Well, it's yeah, it's like the thing. Like if, if an airline was so unregulated that one out of 100 planes crashed, you would think no one would get on it. I don't know. You if, would be if wrong. we're talking like fifteen dollar plane tickets, I'm right. Take exactly. Yeah. Dan would be on those planes all the fucking time. I would be too, man. That's a dice. It's cheaper. Right. Roll the dice. What do you think, Spirit one Airlines? One hundred. Like, Come on. God, Spirit Airlines is no, kind of that. Spirit's it's over kind $40. of reliable. If anything, what's the bad one now? Allegiant, Spirit. They're Frontier. Both, Frontier. Frontier. They're, they're Frontier. all Frontier. Fine. Fine. Yeah, they're, all, they're all better than fucking American or United. I'm just saying, like, when I get on an airplane, uh, like there's still a fucking. Like yes, you got to pay like for your fucking air mask a la carte, but. <laughs> You gotta swipe to get the mask. You just gotta to drop. pay for everything, but you pay for everything. It's still the same I just, shit. I just like it when I get on a uh, Frontier flight or something like that, and there's like an ashtray it's still in the armchair. I'm like, what the fuck? Old school. How like, is this here? How like, is this plane so, still it's a relic. in rotation? It belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> Reference. That's Last Crusade. Yeah. Indiana Jones. Good one. Yeah. I like it. Joke bots are learning. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, by the way, about the union thing, I love unions. My favorite are police unions. I'm actually just trying to politically confuse everyone. Here. Yeah, it's this is like the P90X <laughs> yeah. of political ideology yeah, right just now. I don't really know. Trying to pander to half our audience. <laughs> trying to pander to everybody. I'm pro union. Yeah. Police union. That's what everyone likes. Someone that panders to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck knows. But yeah, so there is literally probably anyone today would think this no easier, more mundane piece of large machinery on earth. For a human being to operate in an elevator. Yeah, it seems like a huge waste of time. You press a button. I don't know. I, I would argue the sink at a, uh, like a club. A Heavy club. machinery? <laughs> no, not a strip. A regular club. You go to a regular club or a regular bar, sometimes they have those guys that give you the hand towels. And... That's not he- I'm talking about like heavy machinery. No one's afraid to use a sink. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> That's fair. Hydrophobic people. There's got to be at least... 12 people so on planet Earth. Earth. They all someone, have rabies. Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone has fucking rabies use, and yeah. is, like, can't wash their hands. But for some reason, it's his last night out before he dies of rabies. They're like, we're going to take Brian to the club. Oh, shit, he can't do it. Get the Fuck. attendant. Uh, maybe. Uh, sorry, uh, shout out to everyone who has rabies listening to this podcast. I didn't mean to offend you. Yeah, we'll make some shirts for you. Yeah. Sometimes you just get fucking bitten by a dog. We got to raise awareness, you know? For rabies. For rabies. <laughs> yeah, that was already on the office. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, fuck. Yeah. Damn it. Everything's been done. And, and Arrested Development. Both had uh, rabies storylines. Story lines, so. Well, you brought up the rabies. I didn't, I didn't like, come up with a whole yeah. raise awareness the concept plan for it. Of- yeah, the raise awareness part was where, with the bridge too I'm far. just trying to take their money from t-shirt sales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah. The, the easiest piece of large machinery on Earth to use. Not only that, but when the elevator had an operator... It was already automatic. They were just paying someone to to push the buttons or move the lever. I was about to say, so like, what was going on with elevators like before buttons? Before buttons, there were just it was just a lever. So like up and down, yeah. basically. And it just you go up, and then it tells you what floor you're at, and you Damn. hit stop. And I was kind of hoping doors. guys were literally pulling up. Right, that's the only way it's not automatic, is if you have a team of laborers <laughs> a in manual. the bowels of the building just <laughs> pulling a fucking rope. Just get hitting back. Yeah. Yeah. There's just like a bunch of 12 year olds before they, labor laws. Just they have that at most them. lifetime fitnesses. They have that rope machine that you just kind of pull. Oh, the forever rope? Yeah. Yeah. Forever rope. Yeah. It feels like a very poor person job for sure. Just like, it's like, uh, that'd be like a sharecropper, but in the city. I was, you know what I mean? I was it's just, just like an elevator fucking rower or yeah, what? Like, it's like a nerdy chimney sweep. Like a nerdy chimney? That sounds like a yoked chimney sweep. <laughs> or a jacked chimney sweep. I don't know. Those guys are fucking- They're still current day fucking doormen. You gotta watch people go in the door, man. No, those doormen watch open people go doors in the that A aren't automatic, and B they carry your shit for you. So I mean, yeah, that could get automated too, but it's not automated yet. They Someone didn't... argue they don't open doors; they keep them closed. Yeah. Wow, that's what they're really there for. Yeah, I, I like that. If I'm paying a lot to stay in a hotel, I want to know they're keep keeping... the riffraff out. Yeah, yeah. out, <laughs> yes. out. Because usually I am the riffraff, so when I can afford to not be the riffraff. I want to look down on the other riffraff. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. They're gross. Classic <laughs> Rob, elitist, looking down on others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, 100%. What else am I supposed to do? From with the this, third story. With this pale skin. 
from the, is that a knock at my suffix? No. Was it? Yeah. What? Oh, that'd be a reach. You know what a yeah, suffix that's a, that's is? That's a bit, no? bit Maybe, of a reach. Yeah, let's bring on the robots. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah those robots are done. Uh, but yeah, so the, these elevators were already automatic, but they still had people running them. Uh, however, despite the fact that these elevators were automatic, that was not obvious to people in 1945. <laughs> people in 1945 looked at operating an elevator the same way you or I would maybe look at the cockpit of a 747 <laughs> or like the steering wheel of a large, not necessarily like a, like a large yacht or something like that. Like they thought, like, like if you would, it'd be like asking to fly a plane midair yeah. or be asking, being asked to drive like a huge fucking truck. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, like the elevator guy to them is like the engineer of a train. Yes. Yeah, they're like, like oh, I don't know how that thing works. Yeah. That's crazy. No, they're like, what? The box on a string? You want me to fly that? <laughs> what? <laughs> just now? Damn, building boxes. Are you supposed to just drive it? Yeah. It was. It was like these people looked at elevators and were like, "You need fucking training to do." I don't know what a fuck you're doing. Like they thought they were going to crash the elevator. If they used it. So even the ones with buttons, they were like, Ugh. Anything. Like, they, they, watched, they watched the elevator people do it as they're on there. They see it the whole way. It's like being in the passenger seat watching someone drive, but the driving's way easier than driving a car. And there's not, like, other elevators on the track. No. Yeah. Just like. And they were still like, no, that's hard. So when, elevator op- when the elevator operators went on strike, uh, I think it was September 24th, 1945. This is actually a wave of strikes after World War II. Uh, we'll get into that. But they went on strike a few weeks after the end of World War II, like literally just a few weeks after the end of World War II. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. People were like, I can't fucking use that elevator. Were there like no stairs in these buildings? There were. It was just like New, but York, it's New City. York City. Yeah, so they so didn't want to like climb 50 fucking yeah, flights of stairs. Yeah. And I mean, back then too, by the way, everyone's smoking like a pack a day. And is in horrible shape. There's actually a really famous Mad Men episode about this very scenario where uh, Don Draper gets Hollis, the elevator operator, to say the elevator's not working before a meeting. <laughs> and then he gets uh, his boss, Roger Sterling, to uh, go on like a 17 martini lunch. And they eat like oysters and shit. And he's like, oh, man, guess we got to walk. And like he's just like hurling up oysters in the stairwell the whole time. Love that. Yeah. No. So I do understand why there needed to be an elevator operator for someone to be like corporate espionage shit well there yeah Yeah. there needed to be an elevator operator because these people thought that they didn't know how to use a fucking elevator yeah like it was legitimately ingrained in them and then like i said also they were like fuck using the stairs like why i'm not climbing up to the like three four quarters of the way up the empire state building no nor should you that's a terrible idea yeah just not there's that's not efficient for anyone i'm sure they I'm sure there were people on 9-11 that were probably like, I got to go down how many flights of stairs? As like, shit's burning over there. Yeah, and they're like, I'll just take the window. (laughs) (laughs) Like, there had to, there was, I guarantee you, there was someone that thought, like, I know this is dire, but, like, that's so many flights of stairs. (laughs) Just one lazy guy. Yeah, like, not a firefighter, like someone who worked in the building. (sighs) Like, some fucking guy named Carl was probably just like, ugh. I don't know, man. That's a lot. Which, by the way, there was a video that was circulated in this weekend of a guy which jumped off a fucking building, right, to commit suicide, gets caught midair by a fucking firefighter and brought back into the window. How? How, how many flights? Or I, how many I feel fl- like the stories. firefighter might have been, like, right under him. He had, he had, to, be the, to, he had to be the floor under. If, you're, if it, that's even, like, six floors under, his arms are getting ripped off. Yeah, right. like, so, either the firefighters or his. But, like, like the yeah. firefighter is roped in. Uh, I think he has his other boys, like, holding his legs and literally just catches him like a fucking fly ball and brings him in. That's incredible. It was insane. I'll have to post it. Uh, maybe we'll post it on the Instagram if we find it. Yeah, we'll be like, it's history. That might be the first time that ever happened. I can't counts imagine as, somebody else. Counts as history, Let's right? Let's catch him. Yeah, yeah, no. Imagine being the guy, though, trying to commit suicide and... A fucking firefighter saves you? Firefighter catches you and just brings you in. And you just, like a that baby. has to be completely, yeah. And then the firefighter's demoralizing. Like, Thanks a lot, asshole. I had to catch you. You probably want to do it even more yeah. afterwards. I'm so embarrassed. I'd be so embarrassed. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's your lowest moment. And then a firefighter just big dicks you? Yeah. He big leaks you don't your feel moment. good about yourself already. Yeah, no, you just got big leaked. Your moment got big leaked by a firefighter. That was going to show everyone, everyone was going to miss you. Yeah. And then now a firefighter's a hero. Mm-hmm. 
and you're just, and you're still sad. You're just the baby he <laughs> saved. Yeah, you're still sad. Not ideal. Uh, so yeah, well, keeping all this in mind, this kept 1.5 million workers from doing their jobs. There was that many? Yes, 1.5 million people could not go to work because these elevator operators oh, went dude, on strike. Dude, I thought you meant. I'm sorry. You thought I there thought was 1.5 million, million elevator, elevator operators. operators. No, 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 no. Good God. I'm like, that's so many elevators. They're the strongest union in the history of the world. There were, like, there were like a couple thousand of them. That's a lot still, but yeah. like, yeah, I need to listen better. So My like, bad. I don't know. These businesses just couldn't operate on the ground. You can't work remote back then. Whoever. Uh, you have to be in the office to do the work. Yeah. It's not like they have computers. What are you doing though? I don't know. We, whatever what are you doing you're in an office doing, back then? Whatever you're doing back then. What are you doing office? You're, you're fucking flipping Rolodexes and ringing bells. Making phone calls and, yeah. Hawking horns. I don't know. <laughs> Bring it down to the ground level. Work on a curb. I don't care. <laughs> no, man. Like, think about this, though. Like, probably the cheapest uh, real estate in those buildings was on the first or second floor, yeah. too. So these people were probably making a killing in the meantime. Yes. The ri- yeah. yeah, the richer people were up higher. So, yeah. It was the, so uh, the strike cost New York, and this is in 1945. Cost New York eight million dollars a day Holy in shit. lost tax revenue and about a hundred million overall uh, by the end of it. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than just dirt. People didn't know how to use elevators, fucking idiots. Uh, but a lot of it is still dirt. People didn't know how to use elevators. Like a, a good a good portion of it is just okay. dirt. People were afraid to use elevators. All I'm thinking is, man, bodegas must have been killing it at this time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Although we're weren't, but how could they not be killing it back then? Everyone's buying a pack a day. Yeah. Uh, there's no. I don't think there's like, newspapers. You, it has to be hard if newspapers. It has to be hard to fail as a bodega in New York City at this time. Sure. Yeah. Like maybe now with like Amazon and shit, you get a little fucked. But back then, like you don't have other options. Yeah, that's a good point. So let's get some background on this. Um. About 15,000. It wasn't just elevator operators that uh, went on strike. However, they were the ones that essentially affected all the other workers not being able to get there. Uh, About 15,000 elevator operators, doormen, porters, firemen, for some reason, and maintenance workers who were employed in commercial buildings went on strike. Uh, In response, there were a couple of other union workers who didn't go on strike, per se, but they just refused to cross other people's picket lines. Sure, they didn't want to scab out. Yeah. Well, they weren't scabbing, but they didn't. They were respecting the other union's picket lines. Oh, so they were like, if a building was being struck, yes, and yes, yes. they wouldn't deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that included like the international ladies' garment union workers, uh, clothing workers, hatters. <laughs> Shell said Boston Corbett. Yeah. yeah. Hatters were. Uh, Hatters probably thought they were striking like aliens from the Nebulon galaxy. Yeah. They were just yeah, all yeah. mercuried out of their minds. Like, no, we will not work for them. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fur and leather workers, too. The whole, you know, apparently the entire garment district in New York City shut down during this. Uh, and it's, the strike was essentially over whether or not the building owners, and these are like skyscrapers. These are fucking fat cat people who Fucking are landlords, man. Fucking landlords. All landlords are evil. All of them. All of them. Even just like an old lady who's renting a second house she owns. Why does she own a second house? Yeah, because she's evil. Lord. Yeah. yeah. Bitch. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Hope she dies. Um, but the strike was essentially over whether or not building owners would accept like contract recommendations uh, made by the War Labor Board. Because the war had only been over a couple weeks. And if you didn't know this, during World War II, the federal government actually controlled all wages and prices throughout the country. No way. Yeah. Sounds pretty uh, communist to me. Well, you know, trying times. Had to just keep things under control. Couldn't let the market get all wacky while you're fighting a, a war to save the world or to run the world. Goes against my values personally, but... Yeah? No, not at all. Does it? No. War powers are... How much did you not wanna want to... <laughs> It'd be funny if you were such a capitalist. You're like, I know I'm Jewish, but is defeating the Nazis more important than letting the market do what it wants? Yeah, I mean, like, let's think about the bottom line for once, guys. <laughs> But also, wouldn't that maybe be too stereotypically Jewish? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's fine. No. Uh, everyone would get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact details of how it was inspired, but essentially the, the unions were like, yeah, the building owners aren't, aren't going to listen to the War Labor Board, so we have to go on strike. Uh, which, to be fair, if you own the Empire State Building in 1945, you probably thought you were a god, and why the fuck would you listen to the government? Not just yeah. a god, the bull god. Yes. 
The bowl god? Yes, the bowl like god. Like the bowl on Wall Street or whatever? Yeah. Or Kid Rock. I, what's that? I don't know what that... He's the bowl god. Is that Does what he, he call himself, himself that? That's his nickname. I didn't know that. Oh, I, yeah, that's I news no to me as well. I had no idea that was his nickname. That's terrifying. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Isn't that a pretty sacrilegious for a guy that's like very not... Is he religious? I was actually thinking about... I, it's fucked up you say that because I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, man, Kid Rock gets more and more... Um, I don't know if he was always like super conservative, but maybe more open with his conservatism. But he's also a clear hedonist. Oh, yeah. So I was wondering, I was like, is he going to become, because it's, there's just like, you know, every, both sides have like their weird alliances of conflicting things, like a weird, almost like unnatural intersectionality. Uh, And I was just wondering, I was like, is Kid Rock one day going to be like, way more into god than he ever was before in christianity but still obviously be a complete hedonist yeah like he'd be like the purge candidate yeah yeah he'd just be, well it'd be like well if god gave me the ability to do whatever i wanted and if it feels good that means god's rewarding me for feeling good and so i should do that well he's a cowboy baby ball with a ball bang to bang different song but rap rock lyric <laughs> bots are catching up we're just feeding them lines yeah in the formula oh well uh but yeah no kid rock's too into golf to actually get into god so is he yeah. i just i feel like there's this close if he ever runs for a uh representative seat in, in michigan you're gonna see him at a church detroit he won't do deep maybe like outer detroit, oh, detroit. He, lives, he lives now like he grew up pretty rich didn't he and he grew and he lives now like in like Kind of. You're you're talking to me like I know a lot about okay. Kid Rock. No. He, he 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 did <laughs> you grow knew up. He rich. was the bull god. <laughs> he did. Yeah, you knew. He was the, what? Yeah. Yeah. You're I literally, he was the bull god. You're literally you informing know, me. <laughs> you of the three of us, you are the expert now for for this table on Kid Rock, and so we're going to ask him more when you say he's the bull god. We're going to ask why. Well, he's I'll the bull try god. to figure out more about Kid Rock when we play in his golf tournament in September. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. I'm just telling you, one day you're going to see Kid Rock like flaunting a crucifix, the, and like. But and not like a normal Catholic or Christian who like hides their hedonism and then goes to church and acts normal. He will be like openly hedonistic the night before the days before. And I don't know if that's better or worse or whatever. Like he'll probably bring a prostitute with him to church, not because he's trying to like convert her, but just because he wants to have his prostitute with him. Yeah. So like, here, Pastor, this is the one that yeah. I did the things with. Yeah. How many Hail Marys? Let me get if some that. extras. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think he's just very to show religious. it off. Yeah. I don't also either way. I'm tired of talking about Kid Rock. All right, that's <laughs> yeah. fair. Uh, another thing that spurred the strike, or and all these strikes in general, um, was obviously the war just ended, so there was still a lot of people overseas serving in the military. However, there were also a lot of people whose time had been up in the military and were back, right? Sure. So there were a lot of people who had just fought a uh, massive world war after serving in the military. Some say the biggest war in history. And uh, they weren't really down to be fucked with at this point. They had just done something so demanding and shitty that they weren't going to take tiny little shits. Yeah. They're not going to get dunked on by some fucking boss. Right. Yeah. So this actually have a fun... Oh, I thought you were going to say they got cushy jobs as elevator operators. That's a pretty cushy job. You're on yeah. your feet a lot, I guess. Yeah. You're not doing a lot of thinking. That's true. But you That's, can't have headphones in listening to a podcast. No, you, there's you elevator actually, music. I'll get into I'll get into this in a minute. But they actually did have to do a lot of interacting with the people on the elevator and stuff. Well, like yeah, that. I mean, it's I, what, what floor they're going to? Well, man. They, were, they were like hosts. Welcome to the elevator. Like it's literally, a, yeah. It's an eight by eight room. You would you think that's like they ridiculous? Have to give them a tour? But it's fucking that's what happened. You know what? No. If I was an elevator operator back then, I would be the jauntiest goddamn. Elevator yeah. opera. Welcome to the elevator. Welcome to my skybox. We can go up. We can go down. Yeah. Can't go sideways. No, if you yet. think that's a lot, uh, you've never like worked in a hotel or done any type Have of... Have you? Yeah. I was a, I was a valet. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. I worked at a uh, very... That's a job that'll definitely get automated one day. Yeah, I worked as a poor at a poor person's like Disney resort. So like not the nice Disney resorts. Yeah. But you said poor person. Yeah. I got it. The, the one where like... You know, a family saves up for two years to go to Disney World, and then they don't spend any other money oh, except at the resort. Really bumming me out. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> they would over overstaff every time. I would make less money than it would take to get there every week. 
the gas cost and gas toll cost. and tolls cost yeah. in uh, Florida. Getting yeah. getting into Disney from wherever UCF is is a fucking trip. A lot of people. I was don't spending know. like sixty bucks every week in tolls. Yeah, yeah. You have to go like you're doing like I four I seventy five like all that or Turnpike or whatever. It's not fun. Making like four dollars an hour plus tips, but the tips were never there. There were no tips. There was yeah. no tips. You're getting tips there. You're like working like as a waiter at McDonald's, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Not, good, I mean, imagine good, you're, working, good you're working as a waiter at a McDonald's buffet. <laughs> is how I would describe it, it. It was a dark, dark time in my life. I thought about driving off a garage multiple times in like a minivan, but oh, you so, can't uh, do that to those families. I didn't even get to <laughs> whatever. Happiest place on earth to lose that fucking minivan. They're rental cars. They're, they they probably didn't pay for the insurance. Rental but. cars. They drove. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were didn't fly. fly? They there's, drove. There's plenty of rent a car like minivans, but there was also uh, like I didn't get to drive cool cars. You would think being a valet gets to drive a lot of cool cars. No, there was never a cool car that rolled I think into that the World Center Marriott in I, Orlando. I think that that thought would have been erased from your head when you showed up on day one, and your boss was like, "This is the poor hotel." <laughs> well, the thing was, so I originally got recruit or like hired for the like really nice Disney hotel, yeah, and then I got traded. <laughs> Yeah, they got a farm system. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> That's crazy. Disney hotels. It's the weirdest thing. Like the valet. Like so. I, I guess the manager for <laughs> the the Hard Rock. That, he was going to be in the Grand Floridian, the way, man. That, did, did they already see you? Did you already show up day one? Because that means they based it one hundred percent on your looks. No, no, no. It wasn't okay. that. It was um. Well, during the interview process, they hired. So me and my friend showed up, and we got interviewed simultaneously. We showed up in the same blue checkered shirt. And they hired both of us. Uh, he failed his drug test, so he did not get the job. Okay. Um, Bad. Shouts to Quinn. Uh, and then oh, I got the job at the Hard Rock uh, in Universal, actually. Um, not Disney, Universal. But oh. the, 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 the fuck saves up to go to Universal? They were at both properties. It, it's a really nice resort. Oh, uh, the Hard Rock. Uh, yeah. But then I, I guess like three days later, they, infor- they texted me and informed me that I had been moved. Okay. I've been traded. To what? The to Tiny what? Tim Resort? The World Center Marriott. Don't go on the court, man. You've been traded. <laughs> Do not show up at this hotel. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> I like that you got traded. <laughs> they were just like, this guy looked poor. So, like, this, guy's, this guy didn't, this guy's not like, if you. This if, guy's not hard rock material. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I if just, you, with your current body, I think you would have stayed at the hard rock, but college body Dan. College body Dan was good. Dan got traded to the Song of the South Resort. He looks a little puffy in that one picture I saw. Wow, body from, shame from much? College? Yeah, nah, I was kind How of. How far back are you going on his IG, dude? Yeah. No, he was showing me pictures. It was uh, I forget what it was for. Or was it? No, it was the one I posted of you, and you asked me to take it down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, t- I asked you to take it down because of my ex girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was but it was it. I posted on the soft core for your birthday. I think, right. right, but yeah. it, was, it was mainly because it was a girl I dated in college. Right. Yeah, I was like maybe don't. But that wasn't her. you weren't as hot then as you are now. Well, that's true. It's really true. weird. Dan got a post about his birthday on the Instagram page. When was your birthday? It's before his or after his? No, it's like right after. It's his right birthday after week. his. Yeah, I got nothing. Man, I don't know. We all have access to it. I can't be doing everyone's birthday. I don't have post. access to it. I didn't make a birthday post for me. That would so. be weird. But yeah, I thought so. I was your friend too. Well. I do like you better than Dan. Honestly, it is surprising that Rob wouldn't do that for himself because nobody strokes himself off more on this podcast than Rob. Ooh, we're letting wow. it out. Huh? Just going hard. You're here. calling him pudgy. He's calling you selfish. Yeah, I'm just over here being a saint. Yep. That's why I like you better. Cool. But also, Dan likes you better. Everyone I feel just, loved. I feel a lot of yeah. love in this Yeah, but chilies. I went to Rob's wedding. I didn't go to Jake's wedding. That's true. Wait, were you invited? <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't invited. Oh, wow. We hit, we hit capacity. Oh. Yeah. We did. I was in the wedding party, bro. Well, it was before me and Jake were kind of like, we knew of each other at the company, but we weren't really friends. Yeah. I think we had a podcast together, but we weren't friends. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh my God. Substock died for All a right. reason. <laughs> Let me get back on topic here. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Sorry. So about the World War II stuff. So all these people were not really down to be fucked with. And a fun side note to give an example of, of these people's mindset after getting out of World War II. That was fine. Uh, when I was at Summer Welcome for Mizzou, mm-hmm. when I was a freshman, or incoming freshman or whatever, they were talking about, like, you did, like, a whole thing on, like, the history of, I'm sure you guys maybe did this, too, on the history of your school. Well, not you. Your school doesn't have a history. But uh, on the history. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, no, he's right, though. He's right. You got my, a cool citronaut flag. Like, my dad's older than my school, so. Uh, but we had a history lesson on the school, like, a big presentation. 
And one of the things they talked about, like, yeah, they talked about like who our rivals were and blah, 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 when it was founded. One of the things they talked about was uh, prior to World War II, Mizzou had this tradition uh, where freshmen wore the little beanies. Yeah. Right? And, you, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in the movie Animal House. Like they wear the beanies or whatever. You know, that's like very, that's, that takes place in the 60s. So it's well post World War II. Animal House, unfamiliar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. But uh, the point was that upperclassmen could uh, identify freshmen and haze them. Right. Right. So, like, you know, usually with, like, spankings or other weird fucking shit like that to just go fuck with the freshmen. I think if you, like, stole a freshman's beanie and, like, they were walking around without their beanie and you knew they were a freshman, they could get, like, the shit kicked out of them or spanked or just whatever fun the fuck. Just stu- fun, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, academically yeah. Uh, stimulating activities, you know? We, right. uh, in college, we played a little, fun little game called Mr. President. Which uh, oh we played that too did you we, we put the, yeah, yeah. yeah everybody put kind of like put their their fingers up to their ear for those listening at home not watching the video uh, like your secret service and then the last person to do so is the president you gotta protect would, him at all costs you gotta protect him at all costs and you would chase him down and tackle him <laughs> get so, the president down <laughs> so we got one time it happened at a tailgate and uh, I remember we ended up causing a few thousand dollars worth of damage because we <laughs> ran through. Uh, a lot of people's tailgates and wrecked a lot of tents. So that's the cost of doing business. God damn. That's pretty funny. You protect yeah, him. I wouldn't be mad. Unless, protect him at all costs. Unless that's you would, like, ran game. over my baby or something, which, of course, you would do because you hate my baby. Right. Um, well, I'll yeah. play Mr. President with your baby. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I don't need to watch you be fucking carried off in cuffs with my baby's skull on your arm. <laughs> Prefer whatever's left of it, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, so that shit stopped real quick after World War II and the GI Bill. Oh, when they started going back because to school? no one who had been dodging Japanese bullets and suicide charges in 100 degree, degree re- weather with 100 degree humidity uh, was really down to uh, have some like rich turd named Dashiell spank him in the quad for being a freshman. Yeah, no, I can't imagine that goes yeah. over well. That happens one time, and right. then like the yeah. fucking PTSD kicks in, and they just snap yeah. their neck. And they literally told us that in the thing. Yeah. They were like, it stopped because all the freshmen were now World War II veterans who were like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> yeah. No, we had, uh, we had guys that would do the GI Bill thing and come yep. pledge the fraternity. And it's like, no, we're not hazing. It's them. like, no, no, we tell them exactly what's happening. It's like, yeah. we'll let you, if you want to watch the lineup, that's fine. Yeah. Like, we can make you a part of it. We're not going to haze you. Like, right. it, it, no one feels comfortable with this. they just have to, like, show up to the meetings? Basically. Yeah, they just show up to the meetings. Right. Like, they don't really have to do anything. They're, yeah. You're auto brother, for right. the most part. So, You've done your time. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's how it goes. So, yeah. So, these people were not to be fucked with. And uh, New York was shut down. Like, the, the Manhattan, I assume, specifically, just shut the fuck down because of the elevator operator strike. Um, and because so many people, not just the elevator operas, operators, because so many people went on strike and so many other people were, like, a part of unions um, that just didn't want to, like, or wanted to respect the strike, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, unlike what would normally happen... Most of the buildings um, didn't try to use scabs or use, um, what would you call it, uh, uh, sk- strike breakers, essentially. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so you're saying uh, people wouldn't cross the lines and those who were protesting or uh, were on strike wouldn't have to bust out the infl- giant inflatable rat? Yeah, yeah, and there's no, one, there's no one trying to beat the shit out of the strikers or yeah. whatever the fuck. Uh, there was one building that tried to use scabs uh, and an elevator operator from the Bronx named Evelyn Wenzel, because these were not just men, uh, slapped and beat the shit out of her replacement as she tried to walk into the building. That's amazing. Well, I mean, we got to put some respect on women back then, too. They just carried us through uh, World War II at home. That's right. Yeah, that, and that's the same thing in these women, too. Like, they were all working in, like, heavy machinery factories, fucking, I assume, brutal jobs. Or, or like, what's the best case scenario? They were scenario? just constantly flexing. Like, you literally, your probably main three scenarios for a woman at that time were uh, one of or some combination of uh, uh, stay-at-home single mom, because husband's gone. Yeah. Working some hot, shitty factory job. Yeah, make him. 
bombs. Or yeah. Or playing, well, yeah, or playing tanks metal. or whatever. Yeah. Or typing. Or you were uh, a nurse caring for wounded soldiers here, or you were overseas, and if you were overseas, you were never not necessarily in danger, depending on where you were. Yeah. Cetera, you know, so the women, too, same fucking thing. Like, they're not, they don't want to be fucked with. They were going through the same fucking shit. Yeah, I like mean, all a, these bitches got real tough real fast. Yeah, I mean, a world, <laughs> God, a world war is uh, a lot yeah. on a society. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So this chick, Evelyn Wenzel, her replacement, who, I don't know who she was, but yeah, she uh, slapped her and beat the shit out of her in front of a crowd. She was the first person to be arrested from the strike that was relatively peaceful otherwise, only because there was just too many people to attack, essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> a lot of elevator operators were actually women. We kind of have that classic image of like a bellhop looking guy that's like 21st floor coming up you know whatever the fuck yeah i mean just this may be assumption of my part but probably a lot of people of color were doing the elevator work uh i think it probably depended on the city and the building yeah i would i did not find this in my research but it would not surprise me if people were super racist and the nicer buildings wanted white Elevator operators. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know that City. one way or the other. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Like every 1950s there period were certainly, piece I've seen. There were certainly black and, and Latino and other it wasn't. And, it wasn't an exclusively white job. As no, it wasn't. Yeah, and I didn't, I did not catch anything in this on the racial makeup. Yeah. But even like, you know. It was everyone, probably an inclusive job is what I'm saying. Yeah. But I mean, everyone was super racist back then. So mm. uh, these unions, I, I don't know what they, they were probably not super <clears> friendly <throat> to black people. And, and if it was Manhattan, which I think it was Manhattan in particular, I, I would guess places like the Empire State Building, et cetera. Again, this is just a guess. Probably prioritized uh, white people. Okay. I don't know that. It's just my guess. Um, and I, again, none of my research talked about racial makeup at all sure yeah no um, i mean i was just, the fact that they had women doing the work too i mean like it just sounds well, like there's it's a pretty... reason they had women doing the work uh um, what's that the female elevator operators were extremely common because you wanted your building to be sexy oh if you don't get an erection in the elevator on your way to a big business meeting is it even worth doing business with that company yeah, it's just the fair market. Yeah. Yeah. That's the free market. No one's going to go to that building if they don't feel hot. Yep. Getting out of the elevator. Yeah. You want fucking babes. And this <clears> was uh, uh, not just in uh, business buildings, but like um, uh, buildings like Macy's and stuff like that, like sure. especially like shopping buildings and shit like that. Because uh, this happened everywhere. The elevator operators, like it wasn't, it was like this, people are picturing just skyscrapers, but this happened in uh, like five-story department store, you know, like all yeah, no, kinds they of were, stuff. They were flight attendants. Yeah. For the box in they the were, Yeah, the women yeah. Were, were like old school fucking, like imagine, it, literally imagine uh, Ellen Pompeo and Catch Me If You Can when yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio bangs her. Like that's, this is what these women were. Uh, female, and they were... Just getting banged out by Leo. Yes. Well, probably. Uh, not Leo, but Leo-esque people. A lot of slick hair. And these, these, these female elevator operators were, uh, unlike the men, who I assume were put for, uh, through some uh, probably like training in terms of not talking like a trash person, but these female o elevator operators were required to go to charm school. Uh, and it feels charm safe. Charm school. That's a thing, by the way. Charm school. Yeah. Like they become witches or? Yes. Okay. A um, lot of spells. Mm -hmm. Love spells. How do you especially. think the elevators work? Yeah. Uh, why magic. do you think people were afraid to use them? Yep. Witchcraft. They didn't know the magic. Makes yeah. sense. The chicks knew the magic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Witches. Uh, they had to go to charm school. And I don't know this for sure either, but it feels safe to assume that in the higher end buildings that they were employed in, um, they were required to probably also be pretty hot. Sure. Yeah. Probably looking a lot of the other way or like pretending they're not hearing shit. Like said. They're, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. For sure. God. Do you imagine they just, brought in headshots? Uh, they definitely came in and th were judged on attractiveness for their interviews. Mm -hmm. Like one hundred. I don't know if I don't know if you if headshots were were an affordable thing back then as opposed to now per se. But like they came in and ah, forty five. Yeah, and you know some building owner was like, I can work with that broad. It's got a nice set, decent vagina. <laughs> so a casting couch. 
Yes. There's probably a lot of yeah, casting couch. Yeah, there was a casting there. couch for elevator operators. Probably. Essentially. It's probably a casting couch for almost every job that mm-hmm. women could want. In that, at that point. At that time. Yeah. That Back was just then it was just called couch. <laughs> Fuck, that's terrible. Just get on the couch. Oh, God, I wish. let's not. Oh. I mean, I just not. I'm not. You're not I wrong. Didn't, I didn't do it. I'm not saying you did it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's oh, shitty. It yeah. sucks. Grow God. up, Jake. God. This is reality. That was reality. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Jake came yeah, in here before this kinda... show started and was like, you see those idiots trying to cling to that plane and cobble? I wasn't saying they were idiots. I'm saying the situation must be pretty dire if you're trying to cling to a fucking plane. It was your tone. Oh. It was your tone. It was my tone? Yeah, your tone. You Every... felt, you, I could tell you felt better than them. I certainly. T- I mean, I feel like I'm in a better situation than them, but I do not feel mm. like smarter than them. No. Well, as a Jewish man, I feel. You don't think you're smarter than the guys who clung to the plane? <laughs> I don't know, on man. Out, on the outside. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a firsthand account of how bad the Taliban is. Like, I don't have. Most like... of the people there didn't cling to the plane. And they also want to leave. You can just say you're smarter than them. <laughs> it was like eight people. <laughs> I know. But I don't want to <laughs> say I'm smarter than people <laughs> fleeing terrorism. <laughs> Or, like, extremism or fundamentalism. Because, like, God, you know, maybe they have, like, maybe falling off that plane is a better death than they would have had with the Taliban. So, I don't know. Also, in Afghanistan, this is their elevator. They don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> this magic craft that the Americans fly at the airport we built. Um, well, at least they're bolder than the fucking Americans that just wouldn't get in the elevator. They're exactly. Like, yeah. But they're braver. I bet you the Americans would have figured out elevators if the Taliban were after them. Chasing yeah, them into the building. Quick. Yeah, it's yeah like, 100%. We're gonna go. We're gonna they would have been like, fuck it. Like, just yeah. move the lever. We're going to the top. Uh, so with the female elevator operators, just to assuage Jake of this nightmare. Um, Thank you. It wasn't, uh, this wasn't in New York, but a, a good example of, of the type of requirement was uh, there's a, a store in Chicago called Marshall Field. It's like a department store. And women ran all the elevators. Uh, there's like famous pictures of them. You can Google them. Uh, Life did a story on them. Uh, they were required to take an eight-week charm and beauty course. Uh, they were taught how to do their makeup and how to elocute, a.k.a. not talk like a piece of trash. So they couldn't come in and be like, Hey, mister, what floor are you going to? Like, they had to, like, be like, Hello. What floor? With, like, kind of like talking like Jenna on 30 Rock or something. It was like an affected accent. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, be classy and get sexually harassed by creepy dudes. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, these, there was, like I said, there was a life article written about them in 1947. So this was, the elevator strike didn't, uh, erase all elevator operators like overnight, but it got rid of most of them very quickly. Um, the, it, it essentially like a lot of places adapted automatic elevators immediately, but there were places that still kind of wanted, and there are still like a very, very few places that do this today, the sort of air of like sophistication. Of having an elevator operator. Oh, sure, yeah. No, I've been in plenty of buildings with still that have operators yeah, yeah, yeah. in them. But it's purely like aesthetic. Yeah, it's it's totally just a flex more than anything. Yeah, one hundred percent. The article in nineteen forty seven noted that the women appeared much happier and prettier after the classes. Huh? Yeah. Get this. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they weren't. <laughs> they were prettier, probably, but <laughs> yeah, they're definitely prettier. They were probably not healthier. Uh, one of the classes was so rigorous. Or the classes also included rigorous exercise, and one one girl, woman, whatever, probably pretty young, so I don't know, like not a girl, not underage, but probably like eight, somewhere between eighteen and twenty five, uh, lost thirty five pounds over the course of eight weeks. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're we're gonna have to do an episode by, by itself on just the old school workout equipment that yeah. people would oh, use. Spring handles, like the just some of the, the stupid ass shit that they would use. Jiggle machines. <laughs> That'll that'll be a callback to Substog. That was an episode we never got to, but we talk about it briefly, but not enough. not really. Yeah, jiggle yeah. machines. Oh, the, the brrr, yeah. like the yes. belt you put on you. Yeah. Right. What if that worked though? It uh, does work. I mean, there's a lot of uh, as seen on TV type products that a lot of parents buy. Yeah. Now it's called but, a total gym. <laughs> oh, you know what was one exercise they had to do in this charm and beauty class or whatever that is actually like I didn't realize that was this old. You know the ab workout things? The, the ro- ab rollers? Ab yeah. Roll? yeah. They would use rolling pins to do that back then. Ab rollers work, though. <laughs> God. That would work. Ab rollers yeah, do work. work. They're a fantastic way to work out your abs. Yeah. They, would, look- do, they would do it with, of, uh, ironically, because it's women in the 1940s. Yeah. Rolling pins Ro- is literal, the funny like, part Literal, like, baking there. rolling pins. Yeah. 
That's actually going to be harder. Like, you, you girls know like, how to use this. Put it on the floor and start rolling cause, out. Because it's, it's got to be harder because it's lower to the ground, too. Yeah. So, like, that would actually be, like, the hardest ab roller ever. Yeah. I might go back to that. Yeah, we should get some rolling pins. Yeah. Just get a rolling pin. Dude, yeah. you want to start? We'll start selling them on the store. Just, uh, just wooden rolling ti- pins? No, titanium alloy man <laughs> okay. pins. Man rolling pins. Man pins. <laughs> man pins for your abs. King turn pins. those turn those kingpins king pins? the scepter yeah king yeah. Pin. no kingpins is perfect kingpin yeah Patent uh, pending. yeah they were using fucking rolling pins and shit it was crazy so the men who operate elevators weren't typically required to be quite as hot as the uh, female uh, elevator operators but they were still obviously trained to use the elevator and um trained to use the elevator <laughs> push and the button. uh i mean it was a it was slightly more complicated than an elevator you'll get on in 2021, but like, not really, like not that much. Yeah, I've seen Willy Wonka. Like, my, my question is, what is the difference? Like, is it that they, they stop the elevator? So there were some older elevators, I think, where you definitely had to also stop it. Yeah, but like, this was not a high level job, right? Right, like you didn't need a fucking degree in something to to do this. You trained people off the street very quickly to use these elevators yeah and you know now i'm thinking about it too a lot of these operators probably their knowledge was just what was on what floor like people would so, do it walk in not knowing you that, know that was a huge thing too they would know what the floors were they would know be like the the floor laundry like whatever the yeah. fuck like fourth floor menswear yeah etc like seventh floor sterling cooper right whatever the fuck um but they were trained and that was a problem these people were trained they knew how to push the lever. They knew it was on what floor. That was actually literally my next note. <laughs> uh, so the average person was, again, extremely fucking hesitant to get on these elevators without an operator. Like, they wouldn't do it. There were people that would walk into the elevator and then come back out and be like, there's no one in here. Like, there's, there's no one fucking in here. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, hello? <laughs> hello? Hello? Um... And so people, that's why people wouldn't go to work, et cetera, wouldn't do anything. Like, they thought they were going to fuck it up and, like, die. Yeah. Like, they thought, again, they're like, it's a box on a string. I'm not trained to use this box on a string. At any moment, it could fall. Yeah, yeah. at any moment. I don't know what I might do. I it, might hit the brake yeah. cable button. Even though I probably literally get into this box every day and think about, especially if you're working in, a, like, a huge skyscraper think about what a peon the guy working the lever is <laughs> really just rip on that guy every yeah. day like this fucking idiot Look at the, god man the elevator operator smelled like shit today what a fucking hobo ass motherfucker and then when they go it's like who's don't. gonna drive the building box <laughs> i don't know what to yeah. do what's up again which one's up if I, if I don't turn the lever down will i go through the roof and into the sky yeah, yeah. Will i just go forever like to Willy the Wonka. Uh, yeah yeah breaking the glass ceiling that's right yeah so that i really do love the fact that they probably did look at these people as like garbage people yeah they're like what a fucking idiot like, and then whoa. like the second they weren't there they were like oh no yeah. oh god oh, i don't know how to use it um despite all of his rage he's still just a rat in a cage smashing pumpkins lyric oh yeah alt rock lyric yeah 90s Perfect. Is this a new bit <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a machine head that's better than the rest. Ooh. To uh, tell jokes go. here. God damn it. Uh, bush. A little bush. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Glyus of so all rock. Um, so, yeah. But despite all of this, um, despite the fact that, like, people were afraid to use the elevators, thought they were way too complicated of machines, uh, the building owners... And, and despite the fact that they smoked like a pack a day and didn't yes. want to go up the stairs. I, I think the, the real thing here is COPD. Yeah. That, that, that was the big yeah. thing that caused the most problems. Not that They were like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> it's like, and also, like, this I'll is, run out of cigarettes by the time I get yeah, to the top of that this building. Is, this is like pre-jogging. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is pre-real like real cardio. So unless you're like, I don't know, like, a t- like playing tennis at your country club or something like that. You're probably not doing a lot of cardio. Yeah, no. And even then, ten, like, it just... Yeah, so these people were smoking, not doing cardio, God knows what else. Um, and, like, that's back then. Like, now, I remember one time I was in San Francisco with the, uh, DVD for the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and he was smoked cigarettes regularly, and we just had to walk up a San Francisco hill to, like, get to this party, like, on a Saturday or Friday or something like that. Yeah, well, that's every... That's every... Being yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. You actually do have to go uphill and, most uh, he, ways. He had to stop, like, 
five times. I honestly don't understand how people live in San Francisco because everything's on a just like an angle. Not yeah. an angle, like an eighty degree angle. Yeah, it's just very stupid. steep, and the roads all how windy. Do you build yeah. stuff on that. It's ridiculous. Poorly. They're one good earthquake away from not existing. Not even one of the ones where it's like it's gonna break California off. Yeah, not like San Andreas fault shit. No. Like also fucking, driving your car, it's just you bottom out every time. Every fucking yeah, time. it's a that, it's a fucking. Nightmare. You can only turn uh, what is it left? In, in no, they're not UPS trucks. No, like in San Francisco, like the streets, almost every street, like you can, it's only like, um, although UPS trucks, can, that's turns. right. UPS trucks can only turn right. I remember, yeah, it's like one of those things where it's just like, I remember last time I was in San Francisco with family, it could have just been where we were. They were just like, yeah, you don't take rights here. You take three lefts just getting around. Cause Why? like you could just never turn right. Why? Cause Wait. everything was like one way. Sounds awful. Yeah. I don't know. I'm probably making this up. I don't know. I mean, I hate one-way streets in general. Yeah. And think they're really fucking stupid. Like, when I first moved here, because downtown here is, is pretty one-way. Yeah, a lot of it's one-way. I, it's like it, three streets that are it one-way. Dry, it still drove me insane. And I couldn't imagine it for, like, a hundred streets or whatever the fuck. It drives me fucking nuts. It's I also a really it. great way to get people going the wrong way down the street if they're not local. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you know how many people you see go the wrong way down 6th Street? All the fucking time. 6th yeah. or 5th. <laughs> Always. Dude. All Usually like 1.30, 2 a.m. Yeah, that's why we have those horrific accidents. Like, man decapitated on scooter during South by Southwest from idiot drunk. Yeah. Like, yeah. All the fucking Happens time. Happens every year. Uh, yeah. So, the building owners, knowing that people were terrified to uh, ride elevators, uh, didn't give a shit. Are they in cave? <laughs> no. And Good. we're just like, fuck these elevator operators. Good. <laughs> they, they, did, they, they knew. They were like, anyone can do this. Fuck them. So here's what they did. So at first, because the riders were, were nervous to get on, and, and because, you know, nervous to get on because no one was flying the elevator, uh, what they did to initially calm the elevator riders was they had they installed speakers and they had someone in like a central office whatever talk them through it they were like that was yeah there was like a call literally it was a calm voice it said this in all the stories like it was a calm voice it's very calm voice it i just, just imagine like, a 1945 fucking elevator speaker <laughs> yeah right it's like what the fuck what no apparently <laughs> so calm apparently it did a, they did a good job like they were just oh. like hello Everything is safe, and you're not going to die. I would not believe that. <laughs> Press whatever button you like. Go where you want. Over, Enjoy. They just do that over like slow jazz. Yeah. yeah. No. Enjoy the majesty of vertical transportation. Yeah. Like they, like literally, people yeah. had to get on, and they're like, I don't know. And some voice was just like, I'm right here. <laughs> Everything's okay. Just like an ASMR video. Literally. Yeah. And they also. So this was actually how emergency phones came to be uh, installed in elevators as well because mm-hmm. the voice was just like, if you get too scared, just pick up the phone. We're right here. We'll talk to you on that. Everything's okay. <laughs> and they also installed a giant... So now you'll see it on elevators and it's just kind of a normal button, the stop button, like the elevator stop button or whatever. Yeah. But the initial ones they installed were big. Right. So to give you an extra illusion of control. Right, of course. Right. So- it's like the escape. So door. if all of a sudden you just start imagining that you're dying, you can hit the stop button to be like, stop dying. Which is hilarious because it makes you stay on the elevator longer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it keeps you on the death box longer. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want it to move. Right. Yeah. It's all sorts of sense making here. That's like the people that uh, fucking ran away from the screen when the train was coming at it. Is that true? I think that might be. Yeah. Like I've, sounds... I've heard that multiple times now where whenever people saw like the train heist movie for the first time in the theaters and there was the shot of the train coming. Oh, great train robbery. Yeah. Great train robbery. Yeah. Um, it's actually the first narrative film. You are the film guy here, but yeah, no, like I I've heard reports that people ran from the theaters thinking they were going to get hit by a train. I 100% believe that. Yeah, I think it is. Or maybe it's the, what's the movie where the fucking moon gets shot in the eye. Oh, journey to the moon or trip to the moon. I think, yeah. I don't think that's a narrative, technically. No, that's I think it's just images. surrealism. Yeah. yeah. But what? They thought the moon got shot. You, you've never seen like the old images of the moon yeah, with yeah. Like, the, the rocket the inside? Yeah, yeah. 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 I would assume, honestly, the funniest way to murder someone from the past, if you had a time machine, 
would just be like go back to like 1900 and then plot or maybe even if they knew what a movie theater was so like 1920 and then like bring them to the present and just make them watch transformers <laughs> just make and then they have a explode. heart attack and die yeah their heads <laughs> I, fucking explode I, I, i'll raise you one um go back to like 1916 and be like oh it's world war one you number it? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, oh, just... World War What? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, it's the first one, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The world and all wars. This is the Great uh, War. Oh, uh, that's the first, the first one. one. Huh? Uh, okay. Wait, there's another one of these? Yeah. yeah. Later. Later. Someone t- told me, like, oh, you guys still only had two? Actually, at this point, I'd be like, yeah, Not when is three? That one's three? Yeah, when is three when would is be three? my question. That's, like, I assume it's coming. Yeah. No, like, now I'd be like, oh, you're on the second year of COVID? Yeah. Like, how many are there? <laughs> forever man infinite yeah it's just here now um another way they got people to uh be down with the elevators was they put out ads showing children and old women happily pushing elevator buttons and and not dying that's how you that's how you win them over the hearts and minds yeah that's like how they get the old people phones to work it just shows like a bunch of like aarp members like clicking big button phones like oh i can text they're pretty much just saying like Women and children can do it. Yeah. Like, don't be a bitch. Old women and yeah. dumb kids can do it. It's the don't same, be a patsy. It's, yeah, it's the 40s version of no balls. Like, Yeah. Come on, dude. Sack up. Yeah. And it worked. While it didn't happen overnight, uh, this 1945 elevator operator strike essentially automated elevators completely. Like, very quickly. It didn't happen, like, by 1946 or whatever, but, like... There was another elevator strike in 1950, elevator operator strike in 1955, and it had no impact whatsoever because their numbers had been so completely thinned. Yeah. And it was just done after that. That just sounds like everyone quit one day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, all right, that's it. Yeah. 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 That is, uh, that is the 1945 elevator strike, and it is literally what is probably going to happen to multiple industries over yeah. the next decade or two. Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's kind of a given that a lot is going to be fucking replaced. I mean, like you already have self-driving cars. Like people are like, well, you need to, like at Should a certain we pay humans a livable wage or uh, create robots that take their jobs. Yeah. You don't have to, I robots. mean like, I wonder what like the health insurance let's, costs let's versus create, the automation, like yeah, repair the robot is. slaves. Yeah. Yeah. No, but then what's even better is you just don't pay people anymore either. Yeah. And right. then they just kind of like slum around. Well, you can pay a million people or you can pay, you know, 10,000 people to, uh, maintain, maintain the robots. Yeah. No. And what's cheap. I mean, probably it's probably cheaper to maintain robots than it is to provide. And then you eventually get robots that maintain the other robots. Right. And then robots that maintain those robots. Well, no, I mean, yeah, but then you, then you retrofit the original robots to also be able to maintain the maintenance robots. So you have a perfect cycle. Who robots, the robots, robots, that's an easy answer. That's uh, not. That's not robots. paradoxical. Who at watches all. the Watchmen? Yeah, yeah. What more Watchmen? Uh, it's more Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have three robots to fix other robots, they'll, they'll fix each other. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a circle jerk, not like a rock paper linear. scissors. Telling yeah. extremely highbrow AI jokes. Yeah. Just like one liners that are just one line. It's Ooh. like like just like of code fork. Yeah. <laughs> like that. That's that's, that's already robot. humor now. Actually, you yeah, just go on some... TikTok and someone's like fork. <laughs> I actually did just download TikTok. Um, yeah. Side note: This I, we're done with the episode now, so we can talk about whatever. But um, I, Rob and yeah, I, were, that only happens at the end of the episode, yeah, right? <laughs> not, not all throughout it. <laughs> but, um, Rob, was, you were telling me like I forget who you're talking to, where they were like talking about how like incest is like going to be the new like sexual oh, taboo that's the cartoon. I was making. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but you were I forget who you were talking. I'm making an incest cartoon, everybody. Yeah, but. Like how normalized it is. Like I was on TikTok for maybe fifteen minutes, and like I was scrolling through, and it's just like, yeah, I date my brother. And it's just like, what? Like there were a lot of people who are like, yeah, I just date my brother. I don't think that's real. First off, you it's get gotta be fake. served what the algorithm thinks you, you want. want. I had yeah. the app for five minutes, but you are from Ocala, so yeah, they're like probably just like he's yeah. Oh, swamp North, trash. North Florida. <laughs> normalize this, this for sister him, sister fucker. Yeah. Or I don't know. I just thought it was weird. There's like, it's not like it takes but two seconds for it to start feeding you weird shit, though. Yeah. Like, what is it reading on my phone that's like, he likes that? Uh, the Chinese know. They just know what I want? Yeah. So they want some, you're telling me the Chinese know that I don't want to see anything like that. I just want to see people verify that it's okay. 
well, you can't. It's it's very. Uh, it's actually a very prude app in terms of like sex stuff. So Jared Taylor talked about this the other day. Um, I think on with Jesse. Um, I don't know if it was recorded or not, but I do agree with his his logic here that is this is just either the Chinese or the Russians fucking with us and programming us with our porn. Oh yeah, I could see that for sure. Just like, like they're just taking normal like Riley Reeve videos or like any normal porn star video and then just retitling it with like stepsister, stepbrother, like brother right. fucker, like that kind of stuff. Just to normalize it and just to fuck up our and then, destabilize our society. Yeah, and then just fuck with us in like you know, long term, like five, ten, fifteen years. I could Well, if I've learned anything from porn, we are an open society and when you're open, you put a lot of fucked up shit in it. And also, porn kind of uh, is the indicator of where society and technology goes, because they're early on everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, Blockbuster, or not block, uh porn is the reason why VHS was chosen over Betamax, mm-hmm. because p- the porn industry chose VHS. That sounds like a good topic. Uh, it's, it's pretty heavily covered. I believe there is like a podcast that covers the, B- uh, the VHS Betamax war. We could just do like all the techn- technological advances due to porn. Because there's a few. Oh, I mean, VR is, has yeah. to be one of them. That's like, advancements porn. in VR. Um, no, nobody's getting a VR, like, rig not looking at porn. I don't, th- I don't even know what else you use it for. I mean, I, people play games with them. <laughs> yeah. I've played, I've played Skyrim on a VR hookup, and you know what's Who weird? Are you rimming? <laughs> the sky, baby. Oh, shit. Yeah, God. God <laughs> rim. <laughs> no, um, but it, one thing I, I definitely think is, like, I don't think we're ready for VR yet because like I was in VR Skyrim for like half hour, 45 minutes. And like when I took off the VR glasses, it wasn't like, Oh, I'm back in the room. It was like, Whoa, fuck. I'm like, I, I really felt like I was not, I knew the graphics weren't lifelike, yeah. but it was just like, you forget about the room you're in. Yeah. Like when you're in it and there's something disassociative there, even on a minor level. See that happened to that's happened to me too. In past games. Like even I remember in high school, like, playing grand theft auto for hours and then going to drive my car for real yeah and it like i started to almost instinctually want to smoke people with your car no kind of uh <laughs> but for sure pass cars but like do it in the opposite lanes. oh just because you know they're in your way yeah. like in grand theft auto you're not following the fucking traffic line. right yeah like you're just you're going where you yeah, need to no, go like that was a real urge that i had to fight i like i i can remember the road i was on because i was like holy shit I think, yeah, and I think some of the most emotion I've ever felt was playing video games like The Last of Us. Jesus, that was fucking dark. I never played that, but <laughs> Portal. Yeah. Portal. Well, I meant, I don't think they're comparable. I but. think Portal's a great game, and it's very unsettling. Okay. No. Sure. Haven't played either. The Last of Us is essentially like playing the fucking road. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're like an old haggard dude with a young yeah. person. By your side, and you're it, going through the zombies. Like Post apocalypse, yeah, yeah, that kind of shit. No, I've I've heard it's a great game, but yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we got on TikTok, but yeah, whatever. We're just talking about we were talking about how uh, TikTok's algorithm thought that you liked fucking your siblings in like five minutes. Yeah. That was the part that like weird. They me read out. you real quick. It's just like they this. read you like a fucking QR code. <laughs> They're like Get this guy. They were like sister pussy. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this white southern piece of shit. Yeah. God, fucking round eye. Let's give him some sister <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Pretty fucking much. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's all I got for today. What'd you guys learn? Uh, if you have a job that is just pressing a button, don't think you can't be replaced. I learned that, uh, you know, the American worker has never been valued. I don't... Man, I'll tell you what. I'm not sure the elevator operator ever should have been. They're oh still humans, oh Rob. <laughs> They're still humans. They're not necessary. But most, again, most jobs aren't necessary. Our jobs aren't necessary. Because the elevator, like I said, it's not like a car. Like a car is not automated, but we just decide to drive it. Oh, The elevator was technically automated more or less from the beginning. And we just assigned someone to pilot it instead of being like, here's how to use it. Go use it. Right. That's a, that's like a, imagine someone carrying you up the stairs be careful <laughs> yeah. you can go either way on this up or down yeah you don't know what you need I, to do i mean honestly we should have created more jobs with some t- some of the technology back then like uh like a toaster operator <laughs> yeah just a man co- you schedule them to yeah. come by for when toasters breakfast are dangerous 
Don't put a fork in it. Yeah. Don't throw it in the bathtub. Nope. Can't make toast in there. See? There, there's a job right there. Toaster yeah. operator. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, yeah. That's the South Park joke, though. That's the, the fucking poop seatbelt. The seatbelt on the toilet episode. Okay, where well, the, we got our South Park quota in. Yeah, so. the TSA comes in. Make sure you got your seatbelt on when you're using the pooper. Yep. That should be a job. But, you know, there aren't poop seatbelts, obviously. But what I was going to say is, like, you know, even when they do automate, like, the car shit, there's going to be, like, purists. They're like, I like to drive. People are going to be like, you're yeah, a psycho. But that's a, that is a thing for sure. And, well, I mean, I guess there's also I purist like to, buildings. that I want to be a purist when it comes to elevators. I, you want an operator? I will, I will no longer ride elevators that don't have an operator. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be at the parking garage for a while. <laughs> I'll take an elevator without an operator every fucking day. I guess day. you just wait for someone else to press it for you. <laughs> I just, like you're just too good to press the buttons a lot yourself. Of, a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah, I need a, I need an attendant, please, for the skybox. Right. Yeah, I mean, even bathroom attendants kind of make more sense to me in a lot of ways because, like, do you tip an elevator operator? Dude, I think some of them I got think tipped they for sure. Definitely got tipped. What if? So next time we're in Vegas, or whatever, and I push the button for somebody else, I'm gonna stick my hand out asking <laughs> yeah. for a tip. It didn't crash, did it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's on me. I'm a pilot. <laughs> pilot of this elevator, you know. 80 years ago, this was a valued profession. Yeah. <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> yeah. And we went on strike, and it all went downhill from there. And it could go So back. really, the unions are the downfall of most jobs. Of this one, for sure. Yeah. They should have thanked. I, I don't know. I, and look, I know that people were like, oh, the elevator, I don't know how to pilot it. But like the, the elevator operators should have been like, we are a bubble. Like we, there is, It's so easy to use this thing. There's no fucking way that we're unreplaceable, that we're irreplaceable. Yeah, That's I would have just, I would have just, I would have just like covered my homework style, covered the buttons. Yeah. And just be like, yeah, you're click, just, click, click. Mm, yeah. yeah. You don't know. But like uh, pretended to press like 19. Pretty much. Uh, but yeah, that's all we got for today. Uh, guys, make sure you like and subscribe to our... Uh, and rate the podcast, of course. Yeah, please Five rate stars, the podcast. If you care to. I think we're going to do a comment reading next week. Uh, yeah, hit to, us with some of your best uh There's been some reviews. good ones. You've posted a few. I, ha- I have. But yeah, maybe end of the episode next week, we'll read for the, the one year some of our best reviews. reviews. Yes, I think we, we, would, we definitely will read our best reviews for, yeah. the, for the one year anniversary. Of course, go ahead and go to softcorehistory.com and uh, support the brand with some merch. Yep. Uh, we got some Topsy merch, shirts. Merch. We got some Softcore History shirts. We got mugs and shit. So uh, Hats. go ahead and Still need my hat. that. <laughs> You're never getting that hat. And then, um, I'll get it soon. yeah, uh, just keep telling your friends about the podcast. We keep growing every week and uh, yeah, we appreciate are, uh, every... We appreciate everybody that listens and watches, and uh, do. thank you for your time, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of content that you could digest. So goddamn much. There's so many, and uh, just thank you for giving us, like, an hour, hour and a half every week, every yeah. time, because we do value that. It means a lot to us, yeah. seriously. Uh, it's just, it's really cool that we've done a lot of work together, and this one's really popping off, and we're enjoying the hell out of it, and we still have, we have we're never going to run out of content. No, that's the thing about history. Yeah. So we'll keep bringing it to you. New content every day. Well, for Dan Register and the guy who thinks he's smarter than those Afghans who are clinging onto a plane, I'm Rob Fox. And you just got soft served.